that he goes, is it true? Overcome with grief, Deborah Goldsmith is real. Voodoo Bees fans want to fix. The stepfather of this Amesbury teenager filled with sadness and outrage. That 13-year-old died just a short time after someone dropped her off at Lawrence General Hospital. We just spoke with the girl's distraught mother who wants to know who would do such a thing. 7 Steve Cooper live in Amesbury with the story at 6. Steve? Adam, as you can imagine, their anguish is real and raw tonight, and they are deeply concerned about what happened. Their daughter suddenly passed away at the hospital. She was dropped off by someone last night, and tonight those parents are demanding answers and justice. I'm going to miss her. She's my baby. And nothing's going to be the same without her. Overcome with grief, Deborah Goldsmith is reeling over the death of her daughter, 13-year-old Chloe Ricard of Amesbury. He was such a good baby. Oh, such a great, lovey 13-year-old. She loved to draw. She Chloe, who lost her dad five years ago, ran away from home Sunday. By early last night, she'd been dropped off at Lawrence General Hospital, sources say in cardiac arrest, by a man who dropped her off and then left. Chloe was pronounced dead a short time later. I want to shake somebody and say, why would you do that? Why would you bring her to the hospital and lifeless, dead? Why didn't you call an ambulance? It was Chloe's stepdad, Brian Dolan, who had to identify the teenager. I'd say it had to be one of the most hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. Because, you know, Debbie goes, is it true? And I just said, oh my God, it's true. It's all true. It's all true. Sources say surveillance video helped police locate the man who brought Chloe's lifeless body to the ER. So far, there have been no arrests. Chloe's family wrestling with the unimaginable. Sadness and anger. Anger that someone would drop her off and simply drive away. It's a monster. You are a monster, and I hope justice pays for this, and I'm going to make sure it does. Uh, the district attorney in Essex County says an autopsy will determine the cause and manner of death, something that they say could take a while. In the meantime, with no arrests, the investigation here is ongoing and active right now. We'll have a names for you tonight. Steve Cooper. Southern News. We are following breaking news from Saugus. Kelly's Roast Beef has been temporarily closed after an employee was diagnosed with a case of salmonella. The Department of Health says investigators are unaware of any cases of salmonella among customers. In a post on Facebook, Kelly's Roast Beef says they have been approved to be open but could not properly staff the restaurant since all employees need to be tested for the illness. We will continue to follow this breaking story throughout the evening. Now on 7, a cruiser takes a dangerous turn. Tonight, a department dealing with shock in the streets. Boston's police commissioner calling it an officer's worst nightmare. Tonight, that child who was hit by a cruiser is recovering. 7 Sharman Sacchetti live in Boston with the latest on what happened there. Sharman. And the Boston Police Commissioner saying today that preliminary findings show this appears to be an accident, though this is still under investigation, and that little girl is expected to recover. Video shows the cruiser pulling out and the little girl walking between it and a parked car. The cruiser hits her and she's sent tumbling into the street. A man picks up the one-year-old and cradles her while her panicked mother runs toward the officers. It was definitely an accident. A terrible one. This happened on Shawmut Avenue in Roxbury last night. A woman who lives nearby says she saw what happened next. I heard the screaming and the mother was really upset and I was just like, my heart just stopped once I heard my baby, my baby got hit. The two Boston police officers stopped and called for help. The girl was taken to the hospital for a broken collarbone. Her mom says she's recovering. She's doing okay. She's doing all right. She's, she's just asked for a, a speedy recovery. That's it. Neighbors say one of the officers looked upset. He just looked. I could see it. It looked like he was crying. Accident. 
actually that happened. In a statement, the police commissioner says the Boston Police Department works hard every day to keep residents safe, and I can tell you that this is any police officer's worst nightmare. I ask for everyone to keep the young girl and her family in our thoughts as she recovers. Neighbors say they're glad the little girl is okay. Hey. Thank God. Um, Thank God. And I felt bad because the poor mother was out here, like, you know, my baby, my baby. And I could understand she was you know, upset. But um, I don't believe it was the officer's fault at all. And the police commissioner adding to his statement that, yes, that little girl is expected to make a full recovery. We're live here in Roxbury, Charmin Skeddy, 70s. The Patriots are locking up a fan favorite for years to come. Star wide receiver Julian Edelman is reportedly staying pat. NFL Network says the team is set to finalize a contract extension with the Super Bowl 53 MVP. Sports director Joe Emersino here now with more details. Joe? He was scheduled to become a free agent after this upcoming season, but Julian Edelman will call New England home for at least two more years. The Patriots reportedly agreeing to a contract extension with the 32-year-old receiver, locking up Tom Brady's top target through the 2021 season. Edelman's new two-year deal will reportedly include an $8 million signing bonus and $12 million in guarantee. Guaranteed money, a nice jump from the $2 million base salary he was scheduled to earn in 2019 before agreeing to this extension. The three-time Super Bowl champion now has a chance to finish his career with the team that drafted him in the seventh round back in 2009. Edelman elevating his game throughout his 10-year career when the lights shine the brightest, racking up 24 catches for 337 yards and a touchdown in three career Super Bowl appearances and taking home Super Bowl 53 MVP honors after torching the Rams for 10 catches and 141 yards. Edelman enters the 2019 season, ranked second all-time in postseason receptions and receiving yards, trailing only Hall of Famer Jerry Rice in both categories. Reporting live in the newsroom, Joe Amorosino, 7 News. All right, let's talk about the Bruins, now six days away from their shot at the cup, and the team is going to take to the ice for a scrimmage at the Garden later this week, wanting to get a real feel for game action since they have this big, big break. Right. It's nice for fans who can't catch a final because they can be part of this excitement. And uh, a lot cheaper as well. Tickets will be going fast for this special showdown. The countdown to the Stanley Cup final is on, and we have Team 7 coverage with all the excitement as we look ahead. Let's start with Trey Air here in the newsroom. Trey. Adam, the Bruins have a lot of time on their hands. Because of that, the team surveyed some different ideas to not stray too far away from the regular routine. What they decided on, a primetime scrimmage on Thursday night inside. TD Garden. Listen, I don't know at the end of the day how everyone's going to play out until game one happens. Uh, we had some ideas. We bandied around and came up with this one. We're looking for compete and we're looking for pace. We're not looking for guys to blow each other up. The Bruins looking to create some controlled chaos Thursday night, skating in an evening scrimmage to try and replicate the feel of game day. Who gets rested in this? Does Tuka need to play the whole thing? Those will be players' decisions themselves. Z, see where he's at. He missed at the end. He looks fine, I, I believe. A 10-day break is the longest the Bruins will have at any point this season. Time off is good to cure anything that is ailing you. And the intent on Thursday night is to make sure nothing counterproductive happens on the ice. This isn't a physicality contest out there. It's, it's c compete on pucks. You know, let's play with some pace. I think we're going to a smart enough group. That'll be the message, like I said, has to be related to the some of the younger guys. That, hey, this is that we're doing this for a reason. Um, but not the reason is not to injure one another. And the Bruins getting this long layoff in light of their conference final sweep of Carolina. That leads to a lot of downtime in between these games. The Bees will look to buck a recent trend in the NHL. All three teams to sweep in these playoffs have lost in the following round. Live in the newsroom, Trade Air, 7 News. The Bruins will learn the Stanley Cup final opponent sometime tonight. It's game six of the Western Conference Finals. The St. Louis Blues have pushed the San Jose Sharks to the brink. Seven's Justin Bork live outside the Garden with more on who fans would rather our team face. Justin? Yeah, we actually spoke with a number of fans out here. They were pretty split on which team they'd rather face because either matchup has a fair bit of history behind it. But the one thing everybody agreed on is that this Bruins team has what it takes to beat either. 
only one more team stands between the Bruins and the Stanley Cup. The question is, which one of these teams is it going to be? The San Jose Sharks or the St. Louis Blues? That's tough. I don't know much about them, to be honest. Even if you aren't sure how these teams match up, there is a lot of history. On the San Jose side, you have Joe Thornton, a former Bruins fan favorite. One last chance. It's not far you know, from where I live. and just be nice to see him. Plus, he's finally got to shave that beard off. On the St. Louis side, you have a lot of Boston wins. The first Super Bowl win of the Tom Brady era against the Rams. The Sox breaking the curse against the Cardinals. Fair to say we've had more parades. Boston has been sticking it to St. Louis sports-wise, and I'd like to continue that tradition. For Coach Bruce Cassidy, it's a matter of preparing for both. He says he's just happy to still be in it. Well, it's nice to go to work this time of year, get up and go to work. The only thing fans know for sure is that this Bruins team has what it takes to win it all. If it's St. Louis, Bruins in five. If it's San Jose, Bruins in six. As long as we can bring, bring everything home and have Chara back on the ice, we'll be good to go. And, of course, we could know pretty soon. St. Louis has a chance to clinch in Game 6 tonight. We're live at the TD Garden. Justin Bork, 7 News. The 7 Sports team has you covered as the Bruins take their shot at the Cup. Watch for reports from our 7 Sports team all throughout the Stanley Cup Final. There is more news today. New details in the case against Patriots owner Robert Kraft. The state of Florida now granting prosecutors more time in the case. Prosecutors say they need this delay as they wait for the judge's decision on their appeal about key evidence. It's all about that videotape. Last week, the judge ruled the prosecution cannot use surveillance video from the day spa during the trial. The video allegedly shows Kraft paying for and receiving sex acts. Kraft is charged with soliciting prostitution. He has pled not guilty to the charges. Transit police are on the hunt for a man wanted in connection uh, with an armed robbery. Transit police say the robbery happened at the Shamit T station earlier this month. They say they want to question this man about the incident. So if you recognize him, you're asked to give police a call. A tractor trailer rollover damages a light pole in Millbury. This happened on the Mass Pike this morning. This is on the westbound uh, off ramp right at exit 10A. The ramp was closed in both directions, but has since been reopened. Sky 7 HD over a high wire scare in Norton. Police say a shock sent an electrical worker tumbling 30 feet to the ground. Seven's Jonathan Hall is live in Norton with more on how the worker is doing and how that happened. John. Well, Kim, a scary incident here. You know, we see these utility workers high up on the poles in all kinds of bad weather, including nor'easters. But today, the weather is perfect. And yet, there was a terrible accident that endangered a worker's life. A call for help from a police officer on a national grid detail in Norton. One of the workers is alleged to be the A line worker had fallen while replacing a pole. He was high above the street, apparently leaning out of his bucket when he came tumbling down. I fell probably about 30 or so feet, um, hit, the, hit a couple wires when he was coming down, um, had some severe burns. There was a big the loud bang. I think it was from the, uh, the electricity hitting his body. Neighbors knew something had gone wrong. They rushed out to the street. I come out, and he's on the ground, and everybody's coming, and they're all around him. This That's what terrible. I do with on the ground. So bad. So... Chief Brian Clark says his officer likely oh, helped boy, save Chief, the worker's life by doing CPR nigga. immediately, along with a National Grid employee who was on the ground. An ambulance rushed the worker to a Rhode Island hospital. My heart goes out for him, his family, his Get co-workers. There's no word on whether he was strapped into a safety harness. Yeah. National Grid says it is committed to safety and will investigate. An official from OSHA was on site examining the scene. Obviously, it's a life-changing event for a family, and I'm sure it's really going to be a hard, hard time ahead for them, and they're in our prayers. Who the fuck are you? Prayers for sure, and no word from uh, Norton Police or from National Grid tonight about just how that worker is doing. We're live in Norton, Jonathan Hall, 7 News. Still to come today, a prom celebration to remember. How a South Shore school gave one classmate a special moment out on a red carpet. Then we'll talk about the Boston <laughs> Hospital that's experiencing a baby boom. Yeah. Lots of sunshine through the day, gusty wind. That fades away tomorrow. Midweek forecast in a few minutes. Ahead at 6.30, a vicious beating on a sidewalk in Southie. The message from the man who says he was attacked outside his home.
Baka. Good. I'm fucking glad. Life can be stressful, but misusing pills to cope with stress.